Hey, what's up? It's Jason Hamburg. I'm really excited about this video and this series of videos that we're putting together because there's a ton of information out there about what dirt bikes to buy and all that sort of stuff. So I'm not gonna go into that. This is basically um, a series of videos that should help you in the event that you are getting into riding, you have a bike, and I just wanna point you in the right direction as far as all the different ways that you can get set up so that you have a more enjoyable experience. I'm a firm believer that if you're gonna take on a hobby, there's kind of a baseline level of getting yourself set up that if you can get to that level, everything else is gonna be easier, more enjoyable, you're gonna have more time to ride. I'm really excited about this series. Uh, we're gonna talk about a bunch of different things, but for this video, we're gonna talk about gear. Gear is probably the first place that you're gonna start. You've just recently bought a new bike and now it's time to kind of get yourself kitted out so that you can be safe uh, and comfortable out on the track or the trails. So everything that I talk about in this series, I wanna kind of categorize it in one of two categories. Firstly, it's gonna be the must-haves and then the other category is kind of the nice-to-haves or the things that you can eventually look at picking up. So we'll start with the must-haves and then I'll also kind of dip into the nice-to-haves. Uh, and probably the very first thing that people are gonna go ahead and do is pick up a helmet. When it comes time to actually look for a helmet, uh, there's a few different things that I would recommend thinking about. Probably of all the gear, this is the place where you want to spend as much money as possible. I remember I used to work in a shop and people would come in, drop $10,000 on a bike, buy like a freaking tie exhaust system for it and like new wheels or something stupid. And then they go over to the helmet shelf and find like the $100 lid and not even try it on, just grab it in the box. Okay, cool, ready to rip. That's insane, like you have one brain, make sure it's protected as much as possible, as much as you can afford. The good helmet range starts in the like 300 to 400 range, and then obviously goes up from there. But there's a few things that you should look for in a helmet to make sure that it's gonna protect you as, as best as possible. So first things first is obviously fitment. You want it to be as snug as possible without having any hot spots. Inside of every helmet, you basically have like the soft, cushy foam, and then behind that foam, you have that dense, uh, you know, oh, what the hell is it called? Is it an EPS? You basically have like the more dense liner. And the foam, you want to be nice and snug, squishing your cheeks, you know, good and snug around the crown of your head, but you obviously don't wanna be like pushing hard into that more dense liner on the inside. Try to get your helmet as snug as possible. And then the other thing that's really interesting with helmets in the last probably like five to seven years, I would say, they've started to incorporate technology that prevents against what's called rotational impacts. Um, and what that basically means is that for a long time, helmets were designed to take like just one hard hit um, cause you just had that liner and then that foam. Whereas helmets nowadays have all sorts of different technologies that essentially allow when the helmet hits the ground, it allows like your skull and your head to actually rotate slightly inside the helmet. And what that does is it, is it kind of just like slows down the rotational forces on your brain and prevents them from just like stopping dead. And then your brain inside your skull twisting, it kind of allows your head to twist a little bit inside the helmet. My argument would be that at this point with the way technology for helmets is, you shouldn't be buying a helmet that doesn't have rotational technology in it. Um, and that's kind of where I think you're gonna be in that like $300 and up range. So the helmet that I use is the Liat 8.5. Um, it's kind of one of Liat's higher end helmets. And for rotational impact, it uses their 360 turbine technology. Uh, but essentially, if you look into it, you know, Liat has their 360 turbine. 6D was really instrumental um, in developing this technology. A lot of companies use what's called MIPS. They all kind of do similar things, uh, but it's worth doing some research around rotational impact technology and kind of figure out what makes the most sense for you. The other thing about helmets is that every brand is going to kind of fit a different head shape. So it's worth going into the local shop and trying some different things on and kind of landing on the thing that you think makes the most sense uh, for what fits you the best. The second kind of must have 
that I would argue is a pair of goggles. Goggles kind of range in the price range from like 30 bucks to like $200. I use the Liat 6.5 Velocity goggles. Realistically, as long as it fits inside your helmet well and it fits your face and creates a nice seal, that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, there's levels to it, obviously, and a higher end goggle will just have things like nicer foam, uh, better quality lenses, and different like ways that the lens is actually made and put into the goggle. My recommendation is sometimes to have more than one set. Just if you're riding multiple days in a row, it's nice to have like non-sweaty, gross goggles. But again, if you're just starting out, one pair is good. And I would recommend look for something that just has a clear lens. Um, I see a lot of people that pick up a set of goggles and they think they're cool because they have like, you know, a mirrored lens or a dark tinted lens. That's great, but, but a clear lens is going to be the most versatile lens for you. It's going to work pretty much in all conditions. Even if it's sunny, it tends to take out some of the UV damage that the sun can do to your eyes. So a clear lens, if you're just going to buy one set of goggles, is definitely the move because when it gets dark or it's cloudy and you have a tinted lens, if you're in the trees, it sucks when you can't see. All right, so moving on, the next must, I would argue, is a pair of riding gloves. The biggest thing that you're looking for for a pair of gloves is that you want it to feel really nice and tight and secure and, and minimize how much bunching up and like excess material is in your palm. Uh, a good set of gloves can help ease the blisters that will come with new riding uh, and just give you a way better feel and a more positive connection to the bike. Like, you want to be able to know what your bike's doing, feel what it's doing in, inside your hands, and be able to feel your clutch and your brake. Um, and if you have a big clunky set of gloves, it's just not going to feel good. And then over time, I think you start to pick up more and more sets of them, and they're just nice to have a couple sets in your bag that you're riding with in case you know your hands get wet or muddy or whatever. So gloves, must have. Next up, I would argue that a... Good chest protector is a must have. So this is the chest protector that I use. It's the Liat Airflex. Um, this one's pretty low, like, is low duty a word? Pretty light duty. Yeah, this one's pretty light duty. It uses um, this material called Airflex, which is essentially like a soft material that upon impact gets really hard. Any form of chest protection is better than no form of chest protection. If you're ever riding at speed and end up coming off the bike, you never know what you're going to land on or simply just the ground itself when you get bucked off the bike. It's good to have that extra layer of protection on your chest and on your back um, just to protect your ribs, to protect your spine and kind of the internals inside of you, right? Um, that's a really big one. I've ridden with a lot of people in the bush who say that they're not riding at speed or they think that they don't need a chest protector because they're they're riding, it doesn't make sense to me, but they're riding in the bush, so a chest protector is not necessary. They think it's like a motocross only thing. Um, I would again argue against that. Out on the trails, you never know what could be in your peripheral vision. Um, there's basically this thing that I call Widowmaker, which is a branch that can be sticking back out off of a tree, like facing towards the trail. And if you take one of those to the chest and you don't have something to protect uh, your, you know, your chest, that could be like a game over scenario. You know, something as light duty as this, it's probably not perfect. I'm trying to strike a balance between, um, you know, breathability and staying cool out on the trails while still protecting myself a little bit. Go into the shops and try a bunch of different chest protectors. You can kind of go something light duty like this. I would say try to get something with a front and a back on it. Or you can get something that's a little more heavy duty where you have, you know, hard plastic. Uh, sometimes they have integrated elbows and shoulder pads and all that sort of stuff. So you're always with chest protectors, you have this kind of uh, balance that you're trying to strike between protection and breathability and comfort. So um, find what you think works best for you, but I would argue that a chest protector of some kind is a super important thing to have. Next up, a must have uh, is some form of knee protection. Your bike actually has a lot of sharp stuff on it, and when you fall or tip over, or honestly, even when you're just riding and going through bumps, Things on your handlebars like your clutch and, and brake perches or your start switch mounts or like any of those things 
can sometimes come down and just like jab or slice into your knee. There's that, and then obviously when you crash, your knees and, and honestly your elbows are kind of the two areas where you're gonna hit first. You don't have to go anything crazy off the start. Uh, you know, uh, entry level knee guard is like $30. It's super simple. Um, some are knee and shin guards, and then the shin guard extends down into your boot. For myself, I use an actual full on knee brace. So I've been wearing knee braces now since I was 15 or 16. And for me, it's always been a preventative measure. I'm not wearing them because I necessarily have had knee injuries in the past. It's always been trying to wear knee braces to prevent knee injuries. So the big difference between a knee brace and a knee guard is that a brace will actually support like this side to side lateral movement and as well as preventing hyperextension because it'll actually lock out. The one thing is that knee braces are pretty expensive. Um, some medical plans, uh, depending on where you work, will actually cover it both from a preventative measure or if you have pre-existing knee injuries. Um, a lot of medical stuff will cover at least a portion of the purchase of some of these. The other thing that braces or even guards like with sleeves will do is they'll make it more comfortable to pinch your bike. Um, that's one thing with riding is you get a lot of control by squeezing the bike with your knees and having a little bit of protection just helps from your knee from like getting raw and, and rubbed down from the side of the bike. So. I'm gonna say that knee guards at the very bare minimum are a must have. And then finally, the, the last must have as far as gear is concerned is a good pair of riding boots. So a good dirt bike boot will protect your foot and your ankle and your shin in a number of ways. Firstly, it'll protect against um, impacts. So, you know, you're riding along a trail uh, and just off in the tall grass is a stump or something that you don't see and you hit your ankle or your shin off that stump. Having all of this added protection on the outside of the boot definitely will help protect against those impacts. The other thing that a good boot will do is it will prevent against, you know, hyper extending your ankle in any particular direction, whether that's crunching it forward this way, pulling it back this way, or that kind of like side to side movement like this. You're not really gonna hit a point where you're spending money for the sake of spending money. The most expensive boots available are the safest boots available in my mind. You know, if you get something that's super, super light duty and low quality, it's definitely still better than not wearing boots, uh, but trying to find something that strikes a balance between your budget and as much protection as you can get is definitely the route to go. Um, again, similarly the helmets, every boot manufacturer kind of has a different fitment for how their boots feel. If you have a wide foot, some boots are gonna fit you better. If you have a really narrow foot, some boots are gonna fit you better. So again, I would say get into your local shops, try boots on and just feel out what makes the most sense for your budget and for the shape and, and, and uh, style of your foot. So yeah, boots are, I would argue, another must have. Unfortunately, in the gear category, there's not a ton of nice to have things. Um, if you want to do this sport and you want to do it safely and comfortably, you know, everything that I've talked about thus far is, is pretty important in order to, uh, yeah, make sure that you can kind of have some longevity in doing this hobby. The next category or thing that I want to talk about is basically the nice to haves. I should put a big like asterisk right now and say that at this point in my life, everything that I'm going to talk about in this entire video series is pretty much a must have for me. Just because I've had it now and everything that I use, I do feel like serves a purpose and it is really nice for me to have, but I'm trying to put it in the context for somebody who's just starting out um, and not trying to blow the whole budget or blow their whole budget, getting themselves fully set up if they're not even fully confident that this is something that they really wanna do. So one of the nice to have category items that I would say would be something like this, which is uh, one of the Usui Hydro Packs. A lot of people know these as like Camel Pack. Uh, I use Usui just because it fits really nice. It, the, secure, the way it secures on your body prevents it from like bouncing up and down. Um, but essentially a Hydro Pack of some kind like this is awesome just because it allows you to pack water, pack snacks, maybe pack some like spare tools and that sort of thing, and be quick to the draw to get it, the hose up into your mouth and just take a sip if you're having a break. 
Um, obviously, when you're just starting out, a backpack with just a bottle of water or a fanny pack or something is a, is a good place to start. But in time, you'll come to find that a hydro pack of some kind is really nice to have. So the other two items that I put in the nice to have category uh, rather than the must have category is a pant and jersey combo. It's one of the first things that I see a lot of people get and then I'm out riding with them and I come to find that you know they don't even have a pair of knee guards or they're not wearing a chest protector but they have this like flashy pant and jersey combo. The reason I'm putting it in the nice to have category is just because as someone who's just starting out it's my opinion that you should be focused on protection and safety over top of looking good or just comfort. So um, yeah, I put the pants and the jersey into this category of nice to have just simply because I would argue that there's better places to spend your money right off the start. When it comes time to actually look for a pant and jersey though, there's a few things that you can look for um, in order to kind of understand what it is that's gonna make or separate different pants and jersey combos from each other. Um, obviously, the pants and jerseys that I use are all made by Liat. And the big things that you're getting when you're getting a jersey or a pair of pants is just something that's designed and cut to be ridden on a motorcycle. So the way that the material is cut and kind of designed is gonna just be a little more comfortable the way that the pant legs kind of come down because you're meant to have bent knees the whole time, that sort of thing. Um, they use a pretty durable, burly material that's gonna hold up well when it comes to brushing up against logs or trees, that sort of thing. Um, and then there's a little bit of burn resistance, especially in the pants. Again, if you're just starting out, um, you, know, you could technically go out and ride in a pair of blue jeans. They're gonna offer a ton of protection. They're just gonna be hot and kind of like sweaty, right? And so what you're getting when you move to something that's more designed for riding, is you're getting that you know kind of tougher burly material but at the same time you're also getting some level of ventilation you're getting some sort of stretch material as well so that you know it's not binding up or or feeling kind of obstructive when you're riding again if you have a finite budget i would say there's better places to start but obviously as you get into the sport you're going to realize that yeah, having a pair of jer or having a pair of pants and a jersey is going to be way more comfortable than just wearing like a t-shirt and a pair of uh, blue jeans. But yeah, I'm just trying to get the point across that it's better to prioritize those safety pieces of equipment rather than something that's just going to kind of support more on the comfort side. So yeah, that's kind of a breakdown of all the different gear that I use and how I would categorize it between must-haves and nice-to-haves. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about parts and maintenance, the things that it's nice to have spares of, and then the different kind of expendable items, things like oil, gas, you know, different cleaners, all of that sort of thing that just make life easier. And if you invest in a baseline setup when you first get started, it's just gonna make you faster when it comes time to perform maintenance and ultimately give you more time to ride. So. Stay tuned for that, and until next time, thank you.